It's Sunday morning with Mark Sainsbury. One of our regular, of course, our regulars here on Radio Live Sunday mornings is Dr. Harold Hillman. He's um, he's a bit of a he's a bit of an achiever, Harold. To be honest, he's a leadership coach. He's a managing director. He's a celebrity speaker. He's written successful books. You know, one of those sort of people who drive you mad sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure. How are you, Harold? I'm fine, Mark. Good morning. Good. Now, look, we're talking about all sorts of things here on Sunday morning, but you're dividing the population in half today between the introverts and the extroverts that's right look what is the difference i mean we all sort of think we know but is there a particular definition yeah we, you might think about introverts as being people who are uh, more reserved in social situations um, a classic trait of introverts mark is that they tend to go inward inside their own heads to make meaning out of things and so introverts like to really think things through they like to form theories and test them in their own head before they bring them forward compared to extroverts who are more outgoing in their interactions and so they tend to be um, more socially inclined they have a broader network of friends and they also tend to go outward when they're trying to make meaning out of things and so sort of that classic distinction between a person who's a little bit more reserved in social situations what we call introverts and those who are a bit more outgoing in their interactions who we call extroverts so the extroverts are the ones we like to hang around with at parties yeah there's a there's a general sense that extroverts are more fun they're more energetic they energize a room a bit more and there's some truth to that because there is something about being a bit of a spark or a catalyst in those social uh, interactions but i don't want people to think that introverts don't have social skills are awkwardly um you know uh, shy and things like that. Introverts are fine in in those types of situations, but they probably are going to be a lot more reserved and probably going to bring their thinking forward only after they formed it clearly in their own heads. So who would you rather have working for you, Harold, an extrovert or an introvert? Listen, I, I would like to have, um, I'd like to have a, a mix of both, and, and here's why. Uh, introverts are good at um, at really going deep around an issue, and so rather than a problem popping up and very quickly we're off racing trying to solve it without fully understanding what may be driving that problem, introverts on your team are very good for being able to go a little bit deeper in terms of analysis. Um, extroverts, um, they connect well. So these are folks who, around stakeholder relations, key relationships that you have to have, they just have an energy that is more outward directed. And around different business requirements or needs, you're going to have to have a nice balance of both introverts and extroverts. But Harold, there are some people you know, you know, you're in a room, and you know when those people are in a room. I and mean, I've seen this I, over the years. Just different people have got that. They, they come into a room and you know they're there. You yeah. Just, you, you just you just know it. Other people, oh, I didn't realise you'd been here all night. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. So those those extroverts, and it's a very. It's almost contagious, isn't it? People, why is it people like to be around that sort of buzz? Yeah, we have a. It, it, there's there's a woman by the name of Susan Kane who's written a book called Quiet: The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. It's an important bookmark because I would say it's a bit of a sanity check for introverts who often feel that they have to do more compromising and more fitting in around this thing that she calls the extrovert ideal. And that extrovert ideal is really the sense that now we've moved to open plan offices where people sit together all day long, lots of brainstorming sessions, lots of just sort of thinking together and, and without really appreciating that for about half the population that goes to work every day, uh, their brains are overly sensitive to that kind of stimulation ongoing eight to ten hours a day. That can be quite draining and, and particularly stressful for introverts who need a little bit more alone time so that they can, again, go inward to um, pull their thinking through. Harold, who makes better leaders? I mean, because the automatic presumption is you think extroverts because they're out there and a lot more noise and rah rah. Yeah. But does that follow? Does that follow logically that they therefore make a, a better leaders in the workplace? Look, a part of leadership is connecting, and um, and so a, a a part of that has to do with 
uh, your willingness and ability to engage with other people. So for extroverts, it probably is a bit easier. But I don't want to slight introverts. I'm an introvert, Mark, and and um, that's your so, right, Harold. <laughs> and so I, I'm I'm speaking on behalf of the fifty percent um, of us who. And again, it, it, introversion doesn't imply that people are devoid of social skills or anything like that. It just simply means that if you're an introverted manager or leader, you may need to push through that introversion a little bit more because your ability to connect with, be in the moment with, and be fully present with people is an important part of leadership. So are, how do, are you proof that an introvert, because in your business, and you're here advising businesses on leadership and how to get best things out of their teams and yeah. doing all this sort of stuff, you would think, I mean, wouldn't you, and the immediate presumption would be, well, you'd need to be a bit of an extrovert to do that. But you're proof that can work the other way. It can work, it can work the other way. I just believe that for introverts, um, you have to push through that um, tendency to want to sort of stay inward. The, but the world is geared towards fact, extroverts, isn't it? I mean, that seems to be the the sort of the way things are set up seems to favor you an extrovert. You're going to do better at school. It, you're going to do better in work. You're going to all sorts of things. Yeah, again, back to that whole notion of the extrovert ideal in society. And particularly now that, you know, in, in office places, we talked about this a few a few shows back, Mark, yeah. um, where everybody now is working an open plan. And introverts need to really push back a little bit more around the space that they need and the opportunity every now and then to unplug and just recharge their batteries. You don't want 50% of your population at work drained at the end of the day because they haven't been able to um, sort of stimulate their brain. Well, that's where you come in, of course, Harold. Hey, listen, thanks for that. And um, and uh, we'll all uh, try and sort of be a little bit more extroverted. Uh, well, we? that's right. Mark, I meant to ask you, what do you think you are, an introvert uh, or an extrovert? Look, I think to be honest, I'm probably, I think I'm, 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 I'm not exactly the shrinking violet. I think I'm probably more on the extroverted side, to be perfectly honest. I'm a, see, it used to be that big thing about horoscopes. I was a Leo Virgo cusp, and <laughs> uh, I'm not into all that stuff, but I used to say, well, it, that means, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a natural leader, but sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, th I think that describes you perfectly Mark. Yeah, well good on you hey Harold catch you next week Harold Hillman of course um, you can catch him on uh, sigmoidcurve.com is his website anything you want to know about uh, leadership and businesses Dr Harold he'll be back next week thank you Mark